Let's look at this Reddit thread. People are flaming the absolute f out of Inspired. All right, joining me after the LCS finals is my MVP vote. Absolute robbery. <laughs> Let's start there. Uh, <laughs> it is uh, Inspired. Uh, is it Casper Sloma? Yeah. Sloma. Yeah. Casper Inspired Sloma, my MVP. Uh, that, was, that was pretty crazy. It, it went to quid. Yeah. I feel like... River stole some votes from you because he was very good at that team too. And when you look at the other parts, which is what I've learned from other voters, it's like if you look at the rest of the team, you take them out, they don't do as well. Like Inspired, I mean, I think Inspired is an insane player. I mean, he, he's an asshole for sure, but like most junglers that are, most junglers are kind of assholes. Bro, how do you not become an asshole if you play solo queue in this role to high enough rank, either rank one or high enough rank that you end up in pro play? Well, which I understand, but you were so suffocating. That's the best word for a jungler that's dominant. It's suffocating. And I thought you were super suffocating. What do you think of it? Yeah, I mean, I think I didn't have uh, many bad games in regular season. Like, I think even if the games were losing, it was usually not because I was playing bad or I was not decisive or something like that. I mm -hmm. think I was playing very well every game. And when we played against 100 Thieves, to me, it felt like Quid is like really pussy player. Like he's just farming his minions, not trying to win the game. Like he was basically a player that does nothing and wins if you int into him. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like he's not like the he player. He would punish. Yeah, he would he, punish. He would punish if you int. Yes. But he will not create opportunities. Like Jojo, for example, he's creating opportunities. When I play, I also try to create opportunities. I think mid lane has so many possibilities to create stuff because mid lane has TP, that's the first thing. He has TP all the time on the map. He right now meta is Engage champs, Ani, mm -hmm. Ari, Talia, everything. So as mid laner, you can create stuff if you are if you are good. And against Quid, I just felt like he was just farming. And then if you feed into him, he will just become strong and then obviously he will kill you. So I didn't I didn't think he's good. That's why for me MVP was either me or or Jojo. I still think Jojo is really good. So so yeah, but I see why people voted for him. I don't really mind. Uh, I would be kind of sad getting MVP and then playing like this in final. I think I didn't, <laughs> I didn't play too well today. I mean, I didn't play bad, but I think when I had opportunities, I'm, I should have called stronger for it. Like, uh, mm. I think in the clutch moments, game three and game four, the I zoom. think if I was more like decisive, we, we could have won. Yeah. I'd int, yeah, well, into you, Dom. Okay, too. relax, like, bro. Mm, not, not quite MVP performances, but you, you played on Vi, game one, and then you went Lee I mean, Sin, Diego, game, game, Lee one, Sin. game one was not my fault. Game one was just Jensen's fault. I think he just played like vegan. Yeah. And our bot lane was <laughs> inting. Yeah. And game two, I think we all played pretty well. Game three, I think it was my fault on the top fight. And I, I was just vegan there. Like, I, I, I don't even, Like, we were running on the TF that had no flash. And Jensen was not flashing instantly, so I, I didn't know what he wants to do. Like when I was running, I was thinking maybe I will just ult flash and just slow him with Viego. But then I was like, maybe surely Annie just ult flash. Annie doesn't ult flash. And then we see Jax in lane and then Annie ult flash. When I was like already trying to kind of back up. But I think if I just keep going forward, we'll win that 2v2. And yeah, yeah, you would win. I will get a lot of gold there instead of Jax getting a lot of gold there. And we will be able to win the game. I think that was like a pre vegan play by me there. And then in team fights, I think Jensen kind of misplayed later because we told him like, just don't ult TF. He has QSS. Just ult anyone else, and we get the reset. And in the last team fight, he ulted the TF that had QSS. So like that was pretty well played by Impact. Mm. Like he knew he will mind control Jensen to ult him. He legit, <laughs> he legit ulted on top of him. Ulted on top of him. Got ulted and then flashed uh, cleans away. Like uh, QSS flash goes away. That was that was like a world class performance by Impact because he just legit. TP it on top of Ani to force him to ult him. And then he knew that even if he dies, they will not lose. But he has QSS and Flash, so he will escape. So he played very well that game. And game four, uh, we got a really big lead. I think Jensen just misplayed level four. Like he shouldn't play so fast. Like we, we, Talia was really low with no TP, no Flash. And we had like such a big advantage because we already won the fight on Raptors. So if you played a bit slower there, I think we will be Thanos mid jungle for the rest of the game. But we died, we slowed down the game. Our bot lane managed to find a good dive, then we dive them again. And then I think the TP advantage from, from Buipo came into the play. I mean, from, from Impact. Impact just played TP and just never TP to top. He just perma kept it to not, le not let us make plays. Yep. And yeah, uh, we just couldn't snowball too hard. And then I think in the team fights, maybe we misplayed. I don't remember the team fights in game four. Are, like I would need to review it, but for sure we misplayed some kind of team fights. I think I was not too happy with how I played in game four. Um, but yeah, I think 
just, just, I don't know. After I made that mistake in game 3 that we were not decisive to kill them on top side, I was like, oh my god, why am I still vegan? And then I just couldn't really focus for the rest of the game. I don't know why. It's kind of weird, but I think it's, I'm to blame there, yeah. Was that a, a... Bro, you know what's crazy? If you watch this interview and then you read the comments, like, like it's not that crazy what he's saying, bro. You would you would literally think if you just read the comments that it's like, because I read the comments first, right? And, and I would just think that he was just saying that like Jensen is the worst player known to man and that he can't win with these fucking bums and the, like his team is just complete fucking garbage. Like that would that that would be what I would think. Like obviously he should not be saying that like he shouldn't throw people under the bus, but like that's just kind of how inspired talks, bro. He's direct, bro. He's a Polish guy. Come on. A true example of tilt. Like, do you think like he's super straightforward. He's super blunt. And like, this is just one of his, the reason why inspired teams are always good is he's like this with his own teammates as well. He holds people accountable and, and he tries to do it in a way that like makes the team better, even if it makes him come off as like being an asshole or he's like strict or whatever. Dude, like literally, I don't even know how many people watch like, the interview. Yeah, yeah. I don't even know how many people watch the interview compared to just like read the title fly inspired fumes about vegan mid play and then they read the reddit title the reddit title is not even the title that Degon put it's inspired really dislikes jensen yeah. really, but not like really. another level of tilt right because usually yeah. when we think of tilt you're like you're angry you know you're angry but fuck it but yeah. this was like i'm in finals you're a champion maybe he says something yeah. crazy you know after this do it and you still like this was not that bad maybe he goes maybe he goes crazy after this and then i just take it back there was like yeah. a little off yeah i just like i didn't go for the play and then i kind of didn't have that clutch factor for the rest of the game. I like, mm. I like made mistake, and I was like thinking, okay, I mean, uh, it's fine. Obviously, it's fine, but we could have still won the game. But uh, I don't know. I didn't focus hundred percent, I guess. And uh, it's fine if you don't focus hundred percent, and you you can still win if your teammates will carry you. But I think I didn't focus hundred percent, and my teammates also didn't carry me. So we lost fights. Like I played mediocre fights after i think my teammates like jensen played kind of bad in the team fight so we lost but i know that if i played better in the first fight that the team fight would be just freeing so it's it's on me uh but uh, yeah i think i just need to play on top of my game if i want to win i i can't be just a passenger in the game mm. so if i make mistakes it's it's my fault i guess when uh this is your first time losing a series right <laughs> which is yeah. the frustrating part of being on the upper side of the bracket yeah uh you're a direct guy. Do you have these same type of conversations with Jensen, who is a veteran and you assume can take these types of conversations? Yeah, for sure. I mean, Jensen is not used to playing this way. I think he always had vegan teammates. And who would play for him? No, like, I think he, like, his teammates were never good at making, never good at making space, never good at playing aggressive. Like, mm. I think he's just not used to playing the game this way. Like uh, right now when I'm playing with him and I'm telling I mean he played at NA for years This is like the whole problem with all the the good NA teams for years is that they would just win by playing like Oriana Zir mid with a tank top and they would just outscale the hell him that his health bar is like His resource like he can use his health bar in the team with him and I'm telling him that his health bar is like his resource playing aggressive like mm. I think he's just not used to playing the game this way like uh, right now when I'm playing with him and I'm telling him that his health bar is like his resource like he can use his health bar in the team fight for the team like even if he dies casts every spell his teammates if they play well they will win the fight for him if he engages a good fight and uh, sometimes uh, like mm. you see him a lot using TP or like even running top to roam it's usually coming from me and Wipo calling him to do that because we try to Tell him that mid lane is not just like one one lane. You can actually impact the game and make the game so much easier for everyone else to play. And I think it's just completely new style for him because before it was just he's just playing in an A, just last hitting minions and whatever happens happens. But True. right now we are just trying to create opportunities and play as a team well in team fights, take space for each other in early game, like help each other in lanes, like take over lanes if someone is losing so the guy can get relieved and like play the, his lane again. And uh, it's for sure more hard because uh, there's an action going on all the time and uh, if you fuck up your tempo we are all gonna flame him because we can't play the game because he fucked up his tempo and he doesn't wanna help them up so it takes time to to learn that i think we are good at it we just kind of choked today who uh who helped you learn that type of style of mid lane and who do you think helped with both learn that style of mid lane uh that I might mean, be a stretch but i don't know i think we're just me and Wipo are just really good at the game that we just uh, know how to create opportunities for each other like 
like Wipo will trade hard when when he knows it's good for the game. Sometimes, I mean, obviously we make mistakes. Like I think I made some mechanical mistakes. I think Wipo overplayed his lane. Like when like Cassante already TP's back to lane, Wipo still has TP, so he knows that proper play is just walk out base TP and his lane is still in a good position but he like tries to squeeze in extra squeeze the extra, extra yeah. wave <laughs> and then base and I think it will work against vegan players that will be scared to not punish impact. Him. But impact impact, not impact punish them impact, impact is good like, he is not vegan at all if he sees <laughs> if he sees that you are making a mistake he will just he will just punish you it's a carnivore yeah so he played well there uh, who teach me and Wipo I don't know I think it just uh, comes is it a European thing? It, How about that? I think it's just maybe European thing, but uh, yeah, I think it's for sure European thing. I think in NA people are just not playing the game like that. I think right now TL is playing the game full tempo. Like every other team in the league, they are not playing well as a team with each other. But in TL you can see that they're playing like an LPL team and they are yeah. trying to help each other all the time and play with tempo, camp on their vision, camp with brushes, uh, group a lot and try to engage the fights. And, uh, I don't know why did it happen. They randomly learned that, and we also randomly learned that. Like once we came to playoffs, I think uh, I think we did a podcast uh, with George and me, and I said that we are working on our tempo play and to play better as a team. And Impact said that they are doing exactly the same, and I could see it in playoffs. Like they actually improved a lot on that, and we did improve on that a lot as well. So I think we are just both pretty strong teams. I do believe we are better mechanically though, and. If we played better mechanically today, we would win. I think we just underperformed. I don't think they did anything special. I think we're just worse. Time's up. Otherwise, you know, I'd have this conversation for you forever on a bunch of yeah. different topics, but media's, you know, checking Yeah, hey, I would be down to talk forever. <laughs> yeah. uh, what's your uh, message to the Fly fam? Who are proud of you for going to MSI? A little, little bum that you didn't. Bro, work this on. was really not that crazy. I don't know why everyone is acting like this was super fucking crazy. Proud of you going for MSI. Yeah, I mean, I'm not super sad we lost. I'm like fine with it because I'm still going to international tournament, which is like the the goal actually. Like I think if we go there, uh, we will be able to improve a lot. And going to planes. I'm always saying going to planes is actually an advantage for Dude, you. Dude, I just, I don't know, man. Maybe I'm just a fucking psychopath, but I just have a different opinion than the community on, like, literally everything. Like, I don't know, like, I don't know how I always end up with the wrong... Like, the thing is, I know that I should not go and tweet about how Inspired is actually... Like, I know that the right thing to do is to shit on Inspired right now. Like, for, like, the, the like... So just play into the community or whatever. And what's so strange is like, I watch this and I don't like, I think that like, I mean, he's just like a harsh person, but I don't think that this is crazy. And I don't think that Jensen would watch this and be like, and, and like lose respect for Inspired because I don't think Inspired would be different to Jensen than he is right now. I think that this is just how Inspired views the game and he's talking candidly. So people think that I'm just like, a contrarian on purpose but it's just yeah i just don't think that this is like close to deserving of the reddit threat like i like i don't think this is good i would say like i'll be like hey bro like you probably shouldn't like say things that could be interpreted as throwing your teammates under under the bus like that's probably where i would draw the line but if you read the reddit comments it is like open season to just shit on everything inspired's ever done that is actually just how how the community sees it it is now open season to say the most crazy crazy shit possible about inspired and i think this is why like I hate the majority of this community. Like, I like the people that I talk to. I like the, the pro players that I have discourse with. I like the people that I see on my streams most of the time. The, the, the general community, I think, is so, like, fake positive. And that's what triggers me. Like, they'll be like, oh, we love positivity. But really what it is with this community is they're just waiting for somebody who is, like, somebody to do something that they perceive as wrong and then they just open up and then they act more toxic than you would ever be they, they say more crazy shit than inspired would ever say about inspired but because they're doing it to the bad guy they're now in the good like that's that's how the community fucking works and i think it's like such bullshit like it's it's like no you guys are not good people you guys are worse people you just are being a worse person to, to somebody who's like who it's acceptable to be worse to so you're you're right in the general like community's mind it's so fucked up bro you just like inspired if another person said this about inspired you'd be pissed if they were wrong i think what inspired is saying is right but i don't actually like like inspired like i don't like inspired as a person that much like, i don't think like you'd be like like he's not my friend or something he's not like somebody who i would really like hang out with i like how he plays the game and i think he's really smart about the game i just don't think that his comments were at all crazy enough to warrant the response i mean it was the same thing when i was like when i tweeted out about the um the like when i tweeted out about the faker situation and i was like i was like 
hey, like, you should probably give credit to Hanwha Life. Like, this is an excuse, whatever. When I tweeted that out, it was just open season because, like, then I'm, like, the bad guy there, right? It's just open season to shit on everything about me. Like, you can say that I'm a failure, and then you can just, like, make up lies. What people don't understand, I don't understand why people think like this, but the general community perspective is that if you say something unpopular, you're going to get, like, really popular off that for some reason. Like, I don't understand why this is a thing. But if you say something going into it that you know is unpopular, right, like, that's somehow really good for your viewership. Like, I don't notice that at all, by the way. Like, my perception is actually the opposite. I think that if you, you, I think that most people that watch streams, for the most part, want you to reinforce the opinions that, that they already have. So they, like, let's say you're a T1 fan, and you go to stream and you're like, hey, bro, like, how do you, and like, this is like right before T1 wins, wins Worlds, or this is after T1 wins Worlds, you're like, oh, how do you think, like, Faker play? And then the streamer's like, yeah, like, the expert says, oh, yeah, like, this guy, like, Faker was fucking amazing at this tournament. Like, that's what they want. If they give you their real opinion where they're like, oh, like, like maybe they're like, oh, I think Owner actually played better than Faker in this tournament. Um, it's just that, like, Owner is less popular, so, like, he didn't get the credit that he deserves. Like, if that's the situation, like, the, the viewer is not going to be more inclined to watch you. So this idea that, like, it's really good for me as a streamer to say negative things or to like say things that are like obviously unpopular to like get more viewers is is so fucking weird because I don't see any of these like redditors like I don't see any viewership increase when I say something unpopular. Like, I don't think that that's something that helps me at all. I think it's actually the opposite. I think that if I were to take the popular side of things, like since I'm already known in the community, I think if I were to take the popular side of things more frequently i think that would actually be better for my career we'll go over this more in between games i kind of want to continue this though because i have like a lot to say on this topic because i mean we still haven't even gone over the reddit thread continue the inspired interview before we go on our rant so here's the end of the inspired interview because it's better to go to planes and learn something there you have a higher chance of winning in an actual bracket mm. it's not that fun to go into the tournament play genji first round like you are still nervous because it's first game of the Messiah, you have to face Chovy Canyon and you're just losing <laughs> peace. Like yeah. I don't wish TL to do that, but I have a feeling they will face either TL, I mean uh, either T1 or Genji in their first game. They're gonna lose in peace and it's not gonna be a fun experience. While maybe we can first play against the worst teams and uh, uh, ramp up or like get a bit of confidence. And if we lose to the worst teams, then we lose to obviously the better teams as well. So then there is no even point facing them if we can't can beat the lower teams. So, uh, I mean, I'm happy people were cheering for us. We almost won the first title for FlyQuest. That's like what makes me the most sad that I kind of mm. didn't come up to expectations. Like people wanted FlyQuest to win their first trophy. I knew that my whole organization uh, was really cheering for us to get the first trophy, but uh, yeah, we didn't manage to do that. I think it's the blame is kind of on me. I think me and Buipo, we are usually the, the stars of the team. I think today both of us kind of underperformed and in the clutch moments and that's why we lost i think we could have we could have easily stepped up and and carried those games or like just play to our level Screamer. i think masu played very well for the final i think he overall masu i think is just the biggest improvement i see like comparing jensen masu or busio i think masu is just uh, improving from game to game and uh, i'm kind of sad that we didn't manage to win it for him David? well you have more games to play Rainbow? internationally my mvp okay. And uh, should be yours at home if, if yeah, you Yeah, I think they're playing club music and he's screaming to the club MVP, music. You should be upset. <laughs> uh, Casper Inspired Shalom, what is everyone. That? Uh, thank you so much, man. Thank I'll you. see you uh, over at MSI, brother. Yeah. All right, cheers. Wait, Good. maybe he's yeah. just an artist. Ah, <laughs> oh, fuck, man. Screamer's going crazy. But it's chill, it's chill. It's actually chill. It's chill. Yep. I mean, it's sad if I would like never win a trophy yet. Yep. Then Okay, so this is the, the interview, which, I mean, look, I think that, that you probably shouldn't say stuff like this. You should just be, like, never saying things negative about your teammates in interviews like this if there's a podcast or you're no longer playing with them. But I think that Jensen is also, like, somebody who you can be pretty upfront with. Like, I don't even think that Jensen would be close to as offended as the community is about this interview. So that's the interview. Time to read the comments. And number one, I love how... Every single time there's one of these these threads, instead of just using the title that Degon had or just saying like there's an interview with Inspired, the fact that they they put the title like this, they they make this the title, obviously influences the way that all the comments are. The title of that thread is Inspired really dislikes Jensen. Like that is not what I got from that at all. Like if anything, it's like oh Inspired thinks that Jensen played like a vegan in finals. Like that would be way more accurate. But like the idea where it's like inspired really dislikes Jensen, it's like, 
that's not what he said at all. It's like, it's obviously just somebody instigating uh, hate against a person that they dislike, right? Like they, well, what it really is, is, the, is this guy dislikes Inspired and he wants Inspired to start getting shit on for it, right? So let's read the comments. Remember when Inspired lost playoffs with EG because he used Smite on Scuttle in front of Elder and blamed JoJo? Exactly what this reminded me of. Eon was right. Literally. I love 2022 EG, but Inspired feels like a bitter ex the way he's talking. He doesn't sound like a bitter ex. He sounds like he is still in love with his ex very openly. It's like, okay, man. I guess. Like, I mean, I think he just thinks that JoJo's a, a really insane player, which, like, I agree with. I think JoJo is... I mean, I've, I've been saying it. When I watch LCS, I think the best players in LCS are JoJo and Inspired. And then behind them are, like impact whippo like these types of guys that's how i see things i thought the title was an exa exaggeration but man inspired spends eight minutes flaming jensen as the main problem in their team in the finals for being vegan having bad team fighting bad decision making not creating opportunities not knowing how to win games not knowing how to create tempo for the team etc since he and whippo have have to consistently tell jensen how to play the game because jensen never got a chance to learn from playing with shit na teammates like that this is such an unfair characterization of what he said by the way this is such a ridiculously unfair characterization of, of what he said. Like, he didn't necessarily even say that, like, the way that he plays the game is perfect or something like that. He said that Jensen is not used to playing a high tempo game because in North America, people generally play low tempo, which is literally just correct, bro. This has been the biggest problem with North America and League of Legends historically is that people just play super low tempo, tanks top, mages mid straight up front to back team fights you see it with cloud nine in this playoffs how when they play a comp that's supposed to be like playing high tempo they're supposed to be forcing summoners and making things happen on the map to leverage like unbalanced fights how they never get into that situation because they are the stereotypical weak side top like control mage mid like that is how they want to fucking play the game but yeah okay anyways keep on going uh, even winter when you consider jensen literally put jojo in the dumpster just a few weeks ago zero kills versus zero deaths uh not to mention the champion jensen looked best on all split got disabled right before playoffs and he didn't miss a beat i mean yeah i mean i think that i think that jensen was in a much better situation to play in that series than jojo though like making it just a jensen versus jojo thing is like yeah it's just not taking into account everything um yeah i saw the interview and i could not believe what i was hearing i mean i can believe it if you if you know inspired at all like this is how he'll talk every single time but like, I don't think that Inspired is just like super unfair. I think if, if Jensen actually like, like improved in terms of the thing, like Jensen is not somebody who is like crazy insane right now. This is not the prime of Jensen's career. I think if Jensen played better, like in the future, he would get full credit from Inspired. I think, Je I think Inspired is just very like, he has a very high standard and he's very practical about how he views the game. What would Inspired were mentioning that they were uh, the sole reason FlyQuest was good? Um, after finals, I immediately thought all that shit talk for that kind of a performance. I mean, I think that this literally proved Bwibble and Inspired's point. I think that Bwibble and Inspired were the best parts of FlyQuest. Like, I don't know how you could even argue that. Like, I don't like I don't know how you could watch FlyQuest and think that Bwibble and Inspired are not the best players on the team, right? And because Bwibble and Inspired did not play up to their level of performance, they didn't play as well as they did, for example, when they played against Cloud9. Because Bwibble and Inspired played worse, the team lost. When the overwhelming majority think Inspired took it too far, perhaps he did. Okay. So, like... Yeah, but God, I have such, like, a good... Right now, I'll just, uh, like, I don't even know what to say. If the overwhelming majority thinks something, then it has to be correct. That's what you're saying. I wonder how that could have went world, went wrong in, in any country in the world before. I can't believe, like, that, that that would ever be a thing. Like, yeah. I mean, I think that what matters is the opinion of the masses. I think that whatever the the majority of people think has to be correct. That's what I think. Leave such a bad taste in your mouth to directly compare your teammates to another player. I play a lot of competitive team-oriented games, some of which have scrims and official casted events, and I would never even compare uh, never even compare teammates like that behind closed doors. Uh, not a good look from Inspired. Show some class. Yeah, I would say that that this is like probably the most reasonable comment that we've read, where it's like. You probably shouldn't say things like this, but it's nowhere close to how the community is making it seem. If you're mad that Quid gets to win without doing anything, even if I'm willing to concede that, then draft better. What? If you're mad that Quid gets to win without doing anything, even if I'm willing to concede that, then draft better. I mean, I guess? Like, I'm trying to even understand, like, what this... Like, I don't think he's mad that Quid won MVP. I just think that he doesn't think that Quid is, like, actually... The reason why his team wins but yeah i mean i i don't think that 
like i mean his team was much better than 100 thieves like I, I don't even understand what this means like wait if you're mad that quid gets to win without doing anything even if i'm willing to see that then draft better wait what is how FlyQuest drafts have anything to do with how quid won like quid quid didn't win as much as inspired like in terms of winning FlyQuest was a better team so f so even if you were go to go down this like line of reason like this makes it seem like quid did better than inspired in playoffs or like one more than inspired like well, i i don't understand simple rational take uh he's so salty that quid won and not him and i love it he doesn't create anything the enemy has to feed into him when quid's best quality was his playmaking and team fights it really feels like he's extremely bitter about losing the final and mvp and shouldn't have done an interview in that frame of mind no i just think that he doesn't think that quid is that good and he th doesn't think that 100 thieves is is that insane as a team like this was something that was really controversial uh, controversial when everyone was calling 100 thieves a fraudulent team like all the the teams all the analysts people were like respect 100 thieves they're actually good it's like but they're just not good and i think that like when you saw how the team played in playoffs you saw exactly what people meant when they weren't getting a bunch of random solo kills and people started playing more disciplined and the uh fights were like more structured 100 Thieves completely fell apart, and they were one of the worst teams in playoffs. Now, I'm convinced Inspired and Whipple partake in mutual masturbation while watching their own VODs and blaming their team. Maybe that's why Inspired is so anti-vegan. He can't resist that Whippo meat. These are actually the comments. It's so insane. <laughs> yeah, that's like, these are literally the comments. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's really strange. Inspired just didn't watch any LCS games and is basing his opinion on quid scrims. I mean, I think he's probably basing his opinion on FlyQuest games versus 100 Thieves. I mean, yeah, they completely murdered them when they played against each other and, like, quid is doing nothing, so that's probably why he thinks it. Like, mostly people will base their opinion of other players based on their experience with the other players. And if you're just beating another player on stage, like... If you're beating the ass of another player on stage, you're probably not going to think that they're super insane. Okay, let's keep on going. Says, oh, I played bad in this one game. For example, Jensen should have flashed and didn't. And then when I went back and then he flashed, then I was late because of Jensen. I could have done better. What? Why right, and talking shit about teammates? Who, who'd have thought? If you're going to single out a teammate in an interview, they have to be the clear inter. They can't be the second worst. They can't narrowly be the worst. If a guy single-handedly lost a series, I'm fine with the teammate saying they had to perform. And I would still put it kindly at that. I mean, you can either just not say anything. I don't feel like this is a thing. Like... I don't think if a player plays like almost it's, it's almost more fucked up to do that if somebody plays like exceptionally bad in a series i think a player like i think it just depends on what type of person you're talking about i think that's what really matters at the end of the day what matters is like how your teammates going to take it if your teammate has thick skin and is somebody who like you speak to directly about this type of stuff and they respect you i don't think that that it, it matters if the community just shits on you for it as long as, like, Jensen does not think that it, like, unless Jensen's feelings are not hurt by this interview, like, that would be what, what would be wrong. If Jensen's feelings are hurt by the interview, then, like, then, obviously, then that's the biggest issue, which it could be. Like, I'm not saying that that couldn't happen, but the idea that it's like, oh, well, somebody has to be the biggest inter, and then, like, and then you should, like, go in on them. Like, if somebody plays really bad, and they feel like they played really bad, and then you go into an interview, and then you're like, yeah, he did play, like, really bad, I don't think that makes you more right. I don't understand how this line of logic works. Like, why does that make you more correct? Thank God TL beat them. Imagine how insufferable he would have been if they won. I can understand why he went without a team for so long. Like, what does this mean? He went without a team for one split. And that one split, he was contracted. Number one, it was in between spring and summer. And late into the summer, the off season is when EG decided to blow up their whole team and they went full, um, full uh, budget. It went a full budget lineup. Like this, I don't understand how comments like this are just upvoted. Like I can, I can kind of understand the other ones to some extent. I think, like I think that they're like way too sensitive and like next level. Like, yeah, they're they're like just next. They're just weird. But here, it's just this doesn't even make sense. This is just like literally a lie i guess i don't know what else you can say besides for this is a lie like what, what does that mean so long he literally missed one split and it was a split where he was under contract until late into that off season and he did have offers during that split like we know it's public that he that he got an a uh, vitality offer during that split to join that that 10th place vitality like this the failed super team 
that he was offered at a point during that split to join that that roster. So the idea that he's like that he's somehow like so toxic that he doesn't get offers it just once again doesn't make sense it's purely just a lie he was benched on eg for one split because eg wanted to go super budget what do you mean he went without a team so and then this is downvoted the most reasonable comment is downvoted have you like this is what i hate about reddit why is every other one that's just like dogpiling and saying some bullshit upvoted and then the one comment that actually makes sense is downvoted it's like dude uh like even if you like you could say fuck inspired we should kill him and that would be like and that to me would be like something that you could side with more than this. Like if that's what you thought, it would be like, well, like I disagree with you, but like, I mean, if, let's, let's discuss that point that you're trying to make, but this is literally just a lie. Like this is just a straight up lie. This isn't an opinion or anything. This is just a straight up lie. It's like he went without a team for so long. What do you mean? What do you mean? He went without a team for so long. He has literally been on a team constantly since he entered and not just like bad teams, like good teams, like high profile teams, like some of the best teams in regions. Like he went to finals multiple times with Rogue. He uh, came to NA, won a tournament with EG, like won LCS with EG. You know, like the team ended up what getting going to Worlds that year as well. In spring, they were like a fourth place team. Like they were top four. Now he's on FlyQuest. They're in finals like. What do you mean he went without a team for so long? Extremely unprofessional and immature of Inspired. It's no wonder they couldn't get it together to close out the split if they don't have respect for each other as players within the team. I mean, I don't I don't necessarily think that this is this is what that means. If I were the owner of this org, I'd be hard pressed to not cut or trade any player who felt it was okay to talk about their teammate like this in an interview. This kind of negativity is absolutely toxic in any team environment. Even if you truly feel this way, you don't go out of the way to say it publicly. Sure, bro. If you're the GM, you can cut Inspired and you can just have a worse team. And but maybe your team will feel better during it. Personally, as a GM, I would like if this was like an issue or if I wanted to get in front of it, I would sit them down together and I'd be like, all right, like Jensen, first off, Jensen, like, did you watch the inspired interview? Like, how do you feel about it? Like, do you think it was unfair? Like, like, how do you feel about what inspired said? And I would just have them talk it out. I would not just start. I would not just bench the best player on the team because he potentially could like you don't even know. Like, I'm friends with Jensen. Like, I've talked to Jensen a lot. Jensen really doesn't seem close to as soft as everyone thinks he is. Like, Jensen is, is a pretty, like, cold motherfucker. Like, if you told him that he played bad, he would be like, all right, how did I play bad? Like, show me. And then he would, like, talk about it. And from my experience with Jensen, I don't think Jensen has a problem admitting he played bad if there was, like, if he actually did in front of other people publicly or anything like he doesn't seem like that type of person at all and i've talked to him a lot so it just doesn't make that much sense to me like jensen just doesn't seem soft and i feel like there's there's players that that like i feel like there's a reason why inspired feels okay to talk about jensen like honestly in his opinion honestly as opposed to somebody who like masu like masu is a rookie it's his first play busio you know he's a rookie as well i think players like jensen in inspired and whippo like they're just they're just some fucking hardcore european motherfuckers bro like they'll just sit down and just hash it out wasn't jensen banned for toxicity years ago I mean, but that's not what it is it's not about being toxic there are players that are toxic that are like that don't like hearing that they're bad like somebody who's like toxic but more on the insecure side would be like dardock like i don't think like if you went in an interview and you said yeah i think dardock actually played really bad this series and you threw dardock under the bus i think that could be an issue because i don't think that dardock would take those comments well i think that he would hold it against you and it would be like super negative i don't think jensen is that same type of person i think jensen would i don't think jensen is responding to this behind the scene close to how the community is jensen forever underrated i find it hard to believe jensen wouldn't have uh, major problems with how his top laner and jungler have been talking about him publicly. I mean, I, I would, I would actually, I, I, I absolutely disagree with this. I actually think it's the other side. I think that I would find it hard to believe that Jensen was super offended by this interview. I would find it really hard to believe that Jensen was mega offended by this interview. Like, maybe I just don't know the guy as well as this redditor dude. Like, I'm like, you know, like he used to be like roommates with Mo. And I would go there all the time. So I've like hung out with this guy a decent amount. I've talked to him a lot on and off stream. I've interviewed him before on the crackdown. Like 
he's like a very banterous funny guy like he's the type of guy where when i brought him on the crackdown like i was like you know bantering him for like oh he got like ninth place and then he's like bantering me for being like you know like i did feel bad about going ninth place but then i remembered that i denied dom going to worlds in season five and i felt a lot better like he's that type of guy like go watch my my crackdown episode with jensen that is so fucking disrespectful inspired and Bwipo are such idiots i swear to god man why is Bwipo getting flame here it's so fucking disrespectful inspired and Bwipo are such idiots i swear to god man did we not watch the same playoffs fly looked loads better when jensen was on a carry champion these guys have such big e ego issues Bwipo's mouth is bigger than his skill and brain at least he isn't attributing his entire his entire team success to his girlfriend anymore like yeah he did say that one time whatever bro it is what it is he didn't actually do it to the degree that this guy is presenting it but i mean obviously the whole thing is now like make them look as bad as possible right that's how it always is with reddit i mean go look at the thread from t1 like just go look at the the t1 thread where they're talking about the ddos situation and look at how they talk about me it's just like this is just what it's okay to do but then the thing is it's so hard like the, the thing is i try to always bring these people publicly like the ones that have like the most negative opinions i always try to like reach out to them hey have a discussion with me publicly and no one like does like people just want to like shit on you and then just like go back to their fucking cave should you should hear Bwipo on hotline league a few weeks ago i was a Bwipo fan before listening to that episode but not anymore listening to him talk for two hours the way he talked about himself it was beyond egotistical and the disrespect he had towards others uh was a big turnoff he's always been that way he's definitely a top western top but i've always disliked him because of his god-awful ego and attitude right is an arrogant jackass with nothing to his name to deserve the kind of ego he has the shitter's gonna end his career without having won anything but still calling himself the best i mean he's literally won like dude it's like this is how can this be upvoted it is literally just a lie he's never won anything he has won lcs like he competes in lcs and lec he's been to finals multiple times he's won two mvps one in eu one in na and he's won the lcs like how can how can this be up like how who agrees with this literally who agrees with this like i just don't get it man i actually just don't do not get it ah whatever it's just it's just a standard thing that everyone does it's just a standard thing everyone does player does something that or player or person does something that people don't agree with suddenly it's open season to say whatever the fuck you want about them you can just lie you can say whatever and then it's just completely accepted it's so it's so bullshit man everyone tries to be anti-toxicity but it's just like they want to just be toxic to the person that it's okay to be toxic to that's all it is they actually really like toxicity